Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a 5-Minute Friday on Hunky Vape. Top of the morning to ya! Yeah, it's one of those international days here on Hunky Vape. For September 25th, 2020, this is your 5-Minute uh, Friday news and advocacy report. As you can see on your screen, here's one of the results of the PMTA process. Your batteries are not going to have warning labels on them saying that they're not to be used in your vape. But if they're genuine batteries, this is a Samsung 30Q. You've been using Samsung 30Q batteries in your vape. Guess what? They're still the same battery. They just now have a warning label because they don't want to go through the rigmarole paperwork of applying for a PMTA so that those devices and those batteries can be matched together. Time for your news and advocacy. First report comes from the state of New Jersey. State of New Jersey, Richard C. Cody, Senator from the District 27 Essex and Morris District, has proposed a new legislation requiring... Now, don't forget, New Jersey has already banned all flavors from being sold in the state. So if you live in New Jersey, you got to order your flavors from elsewhere. Hope it's not confiscated. But now they're going to require that all tobacco product retailers carry and offer for sale certain tobacco use sensation products. So the truth be told now, the pharmaceutical industry wants their cut of your tobacco budget. Now this is not just for vapor products, which is utterly ridiculous in itself. This is for all tobacco products, any form, any derivative of tobacco, or anything that they say is a tobacco product. If you are a retailer in New Jersey and you are trying to sell this product, you're also going to have to stock up and carry tobacco use cessation products, which have already been approved by the Food and Drug Administration for that particular purpose. So if you're running a vape shop, Guess what you now have to stock up on if you want to continue selling your vape stuff? Ugh! How can this get any more ridiculous? Especially now the cloak and dagger routine's over and the pharmaceutical industry is showing their face. Straight up. Well, let's jump across the globe and take a look at Korea. Korea is to double down on e-liquid taxes in 2021. At current rate, the tax rate on e-liquids is 45 cents per milliliter. So, for a 100 mil bottle, that is going to cost you $45 if it already has a nicotine in it. Or you could do like the people in the state of Ohio did when Ohio decided they were going to tax nicotine e-liquid. You know the simple solution there? All you do is you sell flavored e-liquid without nicotine in it and then you buy a one milliliter capsule of your nicotine and juice up your bottle or nick up your bottle well they're doubling their tax rate over in korea it's going to go from 45 cents per milliliter to 90 cents per milliliter so 90 dollar tax on a bottle of juice that normally only retails for 20 bucks seems a bit ridiculous don't you think next Another solution, another workaround. TTI to start distribution of synthetic nicotine. Tobacco Technology Incorporated and its wholly owned subsidiaries, e-liquid tech, and TTI flavors will start distributing their patented synthetic, synthetic nicotine starting in November. Now, this isn't the first time we've heard about synthetic nicotine and it being a way to get around these ridiculous rules that are in place right now. Here's an article from Vaping 360 from September 13th, 2020. It says, will synthetic nicotine skirt FDA's tobacco authority? Hang Sen Technology, located in Shenzhen, China, is also launching synthetic nicotine. Created in a lab rather than extracted from tobacco plants, and this is going to be done in America as well, Synthetic nicotine is not a new concept. Other companies also manufacture tobacco-free nicotine. 
and it has been used commercially in a few vaping products. Well, wouldn't surprise me to find out a lot more vaping products switch over to synthetic nicotine because if you take a look at the actual wording in the bill that is used as enforcement, the Tobacco Control Act, it is specifically for products that are nicotine made or derived from tobacco. So if it doesn't come from tobacco, the rule technically does not apply. Jumping over a little further around the world, let's take a look at Australia. The vaping war is continuing across the globe. E-cigarettes are to be made prescription only. Now, they've already had to have prescription to be able to import their nicotine, but now the government would love to just ban the importation of nicotine and force all the Australians to go to their pharmacy who wants to have nothing to do with nicotine and that's where you're supposed to get your juice. Now, you honestly think that they're going to be carrying every single flavor of every single juice brand? No. You'll be lucky if this gets enacted, if you can walk into a pharmacy that's in your neighborhood and they hand you a catalog to look through. And then you're going to be stuck with being that it's a prescription saying, well, you're only allowed 300 mils of uh, flavored juice, so shop uh, accordingly. And I sincerely hope that you know what these flavors taste like because once we fill your prescription, you can't come back for another three months. So if you get three bottles of juice to last you that three months, which is actually the wrong scale and wrong numbers. However, once you fill your prescription and you've gotten your allotted nicotine for those three months, you're stuck with whatever flavors you get, even if you don't like them. The battle continues. Here's a direct post from abc.net.australia. Vaping and e-cigarette study hopes to uncover any effects of lung health or exercise ability. Now, this has been studied many, many times by many, many institutions across the globe, especially in the UK where it has been studied on multiple occasions. However, we have Dr. Dean Mills, who is now partaking this particular study in Australia. And uh, Dr. Mills said that uh, given e-cigarettes were relatively new devices with very little research being done on their effects, we need to study to determine what the effects are going to be with exercise and lung. Dr. Mills said many people switched to vaping in an effort to stop smoking traditional cigarettes, but that e-cigarettes were yet to be approved by the Therapeutic Goods Association Administration as a sellable product to help people ditch their addiction. Here we go once again with the labels. Is vaping a smoking cessation product? Technically, yes. But so what? Is Dr. Dean Mills going to be an honest researcher that's going to produce results that are replicable where other scientists can reproduce the same results that he is? Or is he going to be another one of our uh, scientists that throw garbage in with their research just to accomplish their goal of making the statements that they want to make? Only time will tell. But this was uh, published just yesterday. Now, coming back to the uh, North America, where vapors in Canada seem to have a uh, pretty reliable and consistent source of being able to, able to access vaping products. This was published in My Yellow Knife Now, Northwest Territories. The territorial government is asking the public for their take on a potential ban on selling flavored vapes. It's worked for many people, including myself, said Cooper. I was what you call an accidental quitter. Yes, he was an accidental quitter. Accidentally quit smoking because of picking up one flavorful vape. He tried the product and threw his pack of cigarettes in the garbage the very next day because he realized it works. If you take flavors away from vaping, 
that completely defeats the whole purpose of what the product was designed for. It would kill the whole vaping industry if all flavors were banned. And they know this. That's why they're going after the flavors. Less than 5% is the average count for how many customers that vape purchase tobacco flavors. 95% of vapors use flavored products because flavoring is what makes vaping work for them. So, this wraps up your 5-Minute Friday. The vaping war continues and it is not isolated to where you are at. This is happening on a global scale. The pharmaceutical industry and the governments want their tax money. They want their income. They want their cash flow. Vaping is an unbelievable way to quit smoking. Unbelievably effective. That's why they force you to try to use nicotine patches and gums. And that's why your batteries now look like this. That wraps up your 5-Minute Friday for summer, September 25th, 2020. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And never let anybody tell you otherwise. Vaping is 97% safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. Have a great weekend, everybody.